Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are going over the assembly, setup, and first engraving process for the Monport GA 60W MOPA Fiber Laser. This video should have all the information needed to get up and running, so you can start making incredible projects with this fiber laser. I'll also be digging into my material testing and calibration process with Lightburn, so even if you don't own a GA60, you can still pick up some tips and tricks for using Lightburn. If you want more information about the Monport GA 60W MOPA, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my upcoming full review of this laser. But let's get Get this thing out of the crate and start engraving. Before we begin, this GA 60 watt MOPA was sent for me to review by Monport. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this video, they simply provided the laser for me to test out and get to know. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, including the machines, materials, or accessories, you can use those links to help support my channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. That's right, I didn't say unboxing before, I said uncrating. The Monport GA 60 watt arrives in a wooden crate. It's also incredibly heavy, probably over a hundred pounds, so you'll want two people to help carry around the crate. Grab a crowbar and a hammer, locate each staple holding on the lid, and pry open the top. After removing the lid, you can pull out some of the foam padding protecting the laser. The GA60 comes with the laser head attached to the lifting stand, but the stand is folded down. If you have two people, you can simply lift the laser out of the crate at this point. However, if you're by yourself, I found that unfolding the stand made it easier for me to lift. So lift the stand up, and use the two included screws to secure the stand in the upright position. Then lift the whole laser out of the crate. And that's it! Assembly done! It just takes those two screws to secure the lifting stand in place. Let's give a quick overview of the machine. The Monport GA 60 watt MOPA is a pulsed fiber laser that uses a pair of Galvo mirrors to direct the focused laser beam onto your material. It produces a 1064 nanometer wavelength laser, which is perfect for engraving almost all metals and plastics. It does not work with wood or transparent materials like clear acrylic or glass. The work area is 175 millimeters by 175 millimeters. It has a grid of screw holes to secure the included metal bars that can be be used to help hold and position your material. Those bars are found in the accessories box, along with the cables, USB drive, test cards, and, most importantly, safety glasses. Read through the manual safety section, as lasers are extremely dangerous. Know what materials you can and cannot cut safely, so you can keep yourself and everyone around you safe. Now we can move the GA60 into its final position in your shop or workspace. Plug in the included power cable into an outlet, plug in the included USB Type-B cable into the GA60, and plug the other end into your computer. We can then switch on the power switch at the back to watch the laser come to life. While the GA60 comes with everything you need to get up and engraving, I would recommend picking up one other accessory, a fume extractor. This is a powerful fan with a HEPA filter that will help pull away smoke, fumes, and particles. Even though I am in a well-ventilated environment, a fume extractor will keep your material clean and help keep your laser safe. I'm using a fume extractor from Omtech, link in the description, but Monport has their own fume extractor that you could pick up that would work just the same. So it's time to set up the software. Monport provides a copy of BSL App Simple, the successor of e CAD on the included USB drive. You can launch the app directly from there to get up and running quickly. Monport calibrates every machine at the factory and includes the machine-specific config files on the included USB drive. Those machine-specific calibrations are also printed on the panel on the side of the laser, so you can cross-reference with that. So launching the included software will also load the correct configs for your laser. If you prefer Lightburn, setup is also pretty straightforward. You'll need Lightburn version 1.7 or higher and a Lightburn Pro license to work with the GA60. Lightburn also has a 30-day free trial that works with all lasers, so you can test it out. Follow Lightburn's instructions to install the software. Launch Lightburn and click Devices. Turn on the laser's power switch, and then click Find My Laser within Lightburn. After a few seconds, it should detect the GA60 as a BSL Fiber Galvo laser. The next screen asks to import a CCAD config file, so click Import Config, navigate to the BSL app simple slash config directory on the USB drive. Here you can select either the BSL CAD or lmcpar.config and click Open. You should see a full list of settings being imported. Click Next and you can rename the laser. You'll also want to make sure that the dimensions are correct, 175 by 175 millimeters. With the device imported, there is one additional setting we need to change. Click Edit at the top menu, then click Device Settings. Click on the Ports and Laser Settings tab and change the fiber type to IPG underscore YLPM. This lets us turn on the Enable Q-Pulse Width setting. This Q-Pulse is what allows us to use the full MOPA functionality of changing the pulse duration and get those excellent engravings. And there we go! We now have Lightburn fully configured to work with the Monport GA 60 watt MOPA fiber laser. So let's start our first engraving. First we need to choose what material to engrave. Monport provides 10 coated aluminum testing cards in their accessories box, so let's use those. While you can engrave directly on the workbench, I like to engrave on a thin piece of wood. The inferred laser doesn't interact with wood, so if I'm engraving something edge to edge, like a coin, then engraving on wood helps to prevent me from making marks on the base plate. I only do it to 
to keep the base plate nice for recording future footage for YouTube, but you can choose to skip the wood and engrave directly on the base plate if you prefer. So now we need to focus the laser. At the bottom of the work area is the autofocus spot. The GA 60 watt MUPA has autofocus. Simply move your material over that spot and press the focus button on the front. The laser head will move down, measure the distance from the surface of your material, and move the laser head the perfect distance away. So I like to jump in with a project and guess on some settings. I'll import my Hoffman Engineering logo, but you can simply use the text tool to type in your name. From past experience, I know that for coated aluminum cards, a thousand millimeters per second move speed is a good starting point for fiber lasers. Coated aluminum doesn't need a whole lot of power, so let's start with 50% and see what happens. And here's the engraving. It took 40 seconds to finish. While it turned out great, we could see sparks, which means that we were engraving into the aluminum. I just want to remove the coating, so let's play around with some settings and see what we can do. To dial in those settings, we can use Lightburn's Material Test Pattern. This grid lets you pick two variables and run a grid of tests for each combination. If you are running BSL App Simple, you could create your own grid test manually but Lightburn makes it very easy. First, I like to fix the power at a set amount somewhere near the middle, like 50%, and then vary the speed versus frequency. In this test, I kept the power at 50%, line interval at 0.03 millimeters, one pass, and a Q pulse of 200 nanoseconds. I then vary the speed from 1000 to 7000 millimeters per second, and frequency from 10 to 2000 kilohertz. This gives me a lot of information. I can see that the 6000 millimeters per second is pretty good at most frequencies, and that frequencies above 500 kilohertz don't seem to make much of a difference. So next, I can fix the speed at 6000 millimeters per second, and vary the power versus frequency. Here we can learn that anything before 40% power has issues at this speed, and again, anything past 200 or so kilohertz doesn't make much of a difference. So one final test, keeping it at 6,000 millimeters per second and testing speed versus frequency. This time modifying the frequency to run between 10 and 200 kilohertz. And there we go, we have our optimized settings. 50% power, 6,000 millimeters per second speed, and somewhere around 150 kilohertz frequency looks great. So let's run the logo with these more optimized settings. This time it only took 14 seconds to engrave or 1.9 times faster. There is one point of confusion with this entire setup. The GA60 manual has very detailed steps going over all of this setup, so if you don't want to follow my guide here, you can just walk through the manual. However, there is one step that might be wrong. Step 14 shows you how to manually modify the device parameters according to the calibration on the nameplate. There are two Galvo mirrors, Galvo 1 and Galvo 2, which each have their own calibration. The manual shows that Galvo 1 on the nameplate should be Galvo 1 in Lightburn, and that Galvo 2 should be Galvo 2. However, when I imported my config, I saw that Lightburn had them swapped. Galvo 1 settings was listed under Galvo 2 and vice versa. So I thought maybe the import was bad, so I followed the manual and manually swapped them back so that Galvo 1's configs were under Galvo 1. But this was incorrect. Lightburn's import did it the correct way. We can test this out very easily though, and I highly recommend that you do the same. You can use this awesome ruler generator by Rob to create an 8 centimeter ruler. I engraved it horizontally to test the x-axis and then rotated it vertically to test the y-axis. And with the incorrect 1 to 1 and 2 to 2 settings, we can see that those two rulers are very wrong. They don't match each other, and they don't match an actual ruler. But if we swap the settings so that 1 is to 2 and 2 is to 1, like the original Lightburn import wanted, running this test again shows the two rulers now match and they match an actual ruler. So now we know the calibration is correct and that the scale is spot on. So one more quick project before you leave. I love deep engraving brass coins and Lightburn makes it easy. I love to look for images on 3D Grayscale, not sponsored, and many of them are free, although you will have to create an account. Download and then import the Grayscale image into Lightburn. From there, we can select the 3D Slice mode, and Lightburn will convert the grayscale image into a height map, where the darker a pixel is, the deeper it'll be engraved. And here's my initial guesses at settings. Let's put the coin on the work surface, press that autofocus button, put on our safety glasses, and turn on the fume extraction. And let's start engraving. It took the GA60 watt MOPA 1 hour and 26 minutes to do the 256 passes, and it turned out beautifully. I'll need to spend a little bit more time to figure out the perfect settings for the cleanup pass, as this first attempt gave a slightly rose-colored appearance. But for a first attempt, I'm pretty impressed. So thank you all for watching my initial unboxing, setup, and calibration of the Monport GA60 watt MOPA fiber laser. I only scratched the surface on what this laser can do. Over the next month, I'll be really getting to know the machine and testing out all kinds of different materials for my full review of the laser. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. If you're interested in the GA60, you can find all of the links in the description. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.